I'm going to try to give you a brief look at some of the so-called religious wars of the past, and to show you that almost none of them were caused by differences in religion, but instead by elite groups who were using the people's beliefs to trick them into fighting wars for the state's own political, not religious, agendas. And because of the control of the information, they were able to do this despite the fact that the wars were, in every case, against the religious beliefs themselves. Let's start with the Holy War that most of us immediately think of, which is the so-called Crusades. The Crusades were a series of military campaigns between the 11th and 13th centuries by the Vatican. The biggest thing to realize here is that the Roman Catholic Church is a political power that uses the religion of Christianity to achieve its various political goals. It's obvious to anyone that's looked into it that the teachings of Christianity are clearly opposed to war of any kind for any reason. This is one of the reasons why the Roman Catholic Church, after it took over Christianity, opposed translations of the Bible into various native tongues for nearly 1,000 years. And it's also why all the services were said in Latin, a language almost no one understood. People of the world at that time had no access to information about real Christianity. If the priest told them that God wanted them to fight in a war, they usually believed him. This is a terrible crime on the part of Rome. It is, in fact, mind control, and the Vatican deserves all the animosity that it gets. But please don't be fooled. This is not because of Christianity or because of the teachings of Jesus. I am, however, certain that that is what we are supposed to think, and I'll show you why in a moment. After the Bible was translated into English and was widely available to the public, many people began to leave Roman Catholicism. As Rome started to lose control, they killed many more people in what became known as the French Wars of Religion and the Thirty Years' War. Again, these so-called holy wars were simply a political organization who was masquerading as a religious organization, trying to retain control of the population that it was now losing. The most ironic thing is that it was the real religion of Christianity that actually ended the Crusades. Once people found out what the Bible actually said, they realized how wrong war was and that they had been deceived. Another so-called religious war is the Japanese Shinto Wars. The same basic method was used in the Shinto Wars. Prominent Zen leaders perverted the Buddhist teachings to encourage blind obedience, mindless killing, and total devotion to the emperor. It was another case of the state using propaganda to get people to fight wars and to devote themselves to the state. They were simply deceived by those that had the ability to propagate ideas, the mass media if you will. Let's move on to Islam. With Islam you have a number of dynamics at work. There are many disagreements, but what is interesting is that the so-called jihad has no official status in Islam. In the West, jihad is often understood as holy war, but it has a broader meaning in Islamic theology. It can be striving to lead a good Muslim life, praying and fasting regularly, being an attentive and faithful spouse and parent, or working hard to spread the message of Islam. There are several things to consider about Islam as we know it today. There was an attempt by America and the West to radicalize Islam to fight the Russians in the Cold War. They did this through propaganda and through the education system. Arab state-sponsored education systems are often funded by Saudi Arabia and or international organizations like the United Nations, which even today continue to teach this new radicalized version of Islam. This is a good example of this system that we've been talking about in action today. For instance, Hamas TV introduced children to a new character. Nahul, the honeybee, is used to indoctrinate innocent Palestinian youth to hate and to become suicide bombers. He was beaten to death by an actor portraying an Israeli soldier. This is not the agenda of the religion, per se, but more the agenda of the people who own the TV stations and the textbooks. As I said, the United Nations itself is not only complicit, but active in teaching innocent Palestinian children to hate others and to martyr themselves. According to its mandate, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, the UNRWA, the UN arm responsible for providing aid and education in the Palestinian territories, employs the school curriculum of Hamas. This means that 658 
elementary and preparatory schools in the West Bank and Gaza are actively funded and operated by the UNRWA. It's another case of elite groups using propaganda to pervert religions for a political agenda. As I've tried to point out before in other places, the New World Order must abolish the Judeo-Christian religions in order to bring in the new religious system. They will cause a tremendous war. They're going to blame it on the Jews and the Christians and the Muslims. There might be a man that seems to rule over the war or the chaos and death. The most important part of that war will not be the war itself, but how the war ends. They will most likely bring in a person or persons who seems to defeat that system and that leader, defeat all the evil that we will have been enduring that whole time. This will include with the system that we now call the New World Order. It most likely will also include some sort of false alien presence or another strange occurrence that could justify a New World Religion, possibly even around 2012. This new person or persons will set up what looks like it will be a new utopia in which all will be united in their new peace as well as their newfound hatred for the religions of the past because of the scars that they will have believed those religions caused them through propaganda. This is the new New World Order. They have been preparing us for this for a while. They have provided for us many of what Sigmund Freud's nephew Edward Bernays called rubber stamps. These are concepts that the state or the media provides in various ways to achieve knee-jerk reactions, usually one-line responses to certain issues. One such rubber stamp we have been provided to facilitate this ultimate goal is the phrase, look at all the wars that religion has caused.